Some people are very perceptive to input latency, and sometimes in a game it can mean a matter of life and death between jumping out of the way or getting that last attack in right before you get hit. On Windows handhelds, fortunately, there is actually a way to make this a lot better. Most of the time, when you're attacking in games and when you're moving your joysticks, there's an input latency of up to about 7 to 12 milliseconds. But with this tool, you should be able to mitigate a lot of this and bring it down to as low as 1 to 2, maybe 3 milliseconds. It's going to largely depend on which device you're using, but you should be able to get some pretty good results. I'm going to test it here on the Loki Zero, as every second's going to count with this device, as I like to play a lot of indies on it. Skull the Hero Slayer here is definitely one of those titles where you need to jump out of the way to avoid getting hit and stuff. I also play a lot of Hades on here, and Hades is another one of those titles where every second counts in your reaction speed. So how do you get the input latency on these devices down from about 8 milliseconds down to 2 or 3 milliseconds? Well, let's see what we can do on the Loki Zero and to see if there's a way to fix that on all your Windows handhelds. This is only going to work on Windows handhelds, so it won't work on SteamOS. If there's another tool out there that can do the same thing on SteamOS, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I'd be really excited to check it out. Since this tool is only available on Windows though, let's try it on the Loki Zero and see what kind of results we get. Without further ado though, let's just jump right in. The first thing that you want to do is to download a tool called X Input Test. This is going to test the input latency on the device's stock. Once this is done, you want to extract it and go to the 64-bit folder. From there, you're going to see three different EXE files. There's one that's called 1000 samples, one that's 2000 samples, and one that's 4000 samples. This is how many times it's going to test the controller itself for the latency, so the more you test, the more accurate it's going to be. However, 4000 can take a while to test. So I do recommend just using the 2000 samples one as your base default. We're going to open that up, and it's going to ask us, we're going to need to move the left joystick. Keep spinning this around, and it's going to do a test of the latency on the controller itself. Once it hits 2000 samples, it's going to give you an average and it's going to tell you what polling rate you're using. Now that we've finished, you can see at the bottom here, the Loki Zero is averaging about 7.78 milliseconds with a polling rate of about 128. 128 is pretty standard for most typical mice, but you can do a lot better. Gaming mice can go up to 1000 hertz polling rate and if your polling rate is higher, your latency is going to be a lot lower. So what we essentially have to do is to take this polling rate and put it as high as we can to mitigate this input latency. You can also overclock this polling rate on any controller using the same method that I'm going to show you today. This should help mitigate your input latency on any controller or any Windows handheld. It's pretty cool to overclock your controller, so let me show you how to get that started. Now we know what we're working with here, let's see if we can get this any better than what it is. I'm going to swap over to my capture card so this is a little easier to see. The first thing that you need to do is to head over to Google and search up the Lord of Mice. This is going to pop up with his GitHub page for his overclocking tool. Once in there, you're going to find two zip folders here. You're going to want this one at the top. You're going to click on that. Once in there, you're going to click the more actions here and download that tool. That's going to download the zip folder that we need, so right click on that show in folder, click on the folder and extract all, then just extract that. What we're going to need to do in here is to open up the driver folder, then search for the setup file. Because this tool is built for mice specifically, it's going to start on the mouse page, but you can overclock any peripheral with this. Click the drop down menu at the top here and select all. Then we're looking for the controller. So this is the controller here on my Loki Zero. We can see here that the rate is set to default. So what we need to do first is to install the service. So this will automatically start once you're starting your computer. Then once that's done, check the box in the bottom left corner once you've selected the controller. Now the controller is set to choose whatever value that we set. By default, it's going to say default but you can set it to any of these rates. 
The closest one here on this list was the 125 to what it was actually polling at, but you can set it to whatever you want. I do recommend setting it to a thousand as even if it can't hit a thousand, it's going to tell you what it's capable of. So we're going to set it to a thousand. We've installed that service and we've selected our controller here. So all we have to do now is to hit restart. This will restart the device so we can take advantage of the changes. There's a message that pops up here that says, hey, if you can't restart, you're going to have to do it manually. You can also just restart your device manually. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. With the computer restarted, go back to your downloads folder and search for that X input test again. Then go to the 64-bit folder and load up the 2000 samples. Now we're going to test the input latency of the controller after we've overclocked it. Go ahead and spin the left joystick. And you can already tell that this thing is pulling way lower than what it was before. We went from about 8 milliseconds input latency down to 2.8. That's a really good reduction in input latency. Our polling rate has also gone up to about 350. This means that the controller on the device itself isn't capable of reaching a thousand hertz polling rate, but that's okay because we're still getting a nice reduction in our input latency. Just for curiosity's sake as well, we can go ahead and drop the polling rate down to about 500 because that's a lot closer to what the device is actually polling at. Let's go back to our downloads folder and load up the driver, open up the setup tool again, Click the drop down and select all, then select the controller here. And remember, we're going to swap that down to 500. This is a lot closer to what the device is actually capable of. It's also worth noting that this does not drain your battery any faster than what it would if it was set lower. At least for my tests, I haven't noticed any extra battery drain. So now that we've set this to 500, let's restart this one more time and see if it gets us any better results. The results should be exactly the same, so let's give it a quick reboot and check it out. I just restarted my computer, so let's test it out to see how well 500Hz does. So this is actually giving us better results. This is going to vary slightly, and the polling rate is also going to vary slightly as well, because every variance test that you run, this might be able to run a little bit better. But we're sitting at around 400 roughly on average, so that seems to be where this controller is going to sit. However, the input latency is varying anywhere from about 2.4 to about 3 milliseconds. This affects the controller on the device and it should be a lot more responsive now in games, now that we've overclocked it down to 2.4 milliseconds. I might have to try this on my ROG Ally to see what that one's capable of, but this one is pretty dang good. I did not expect the Loki Zero to hit 400Hz in polling rate on the controller. That's pretty dang impressive. Now that that's closed, let's open up a game and see if we notice any better reductions in our input latency. It's only going to be about 6 milliseconds, so not everybody's going to notice this, but for a lot of people, 6 milliseconds is pretty perceivable. I am finding it a lot easier to dodge stuff on Hades. And I'm not really the greatest at this game either, so that's a lot. One thing I'm noticing on Hades is it's pretty quick from when you actually tap something to when it responds on screen. I'm also used to the 8-bit Doe Ultimate Bluetooth and that's on a 2.4 GHz connection so that thing has really good input latency. The 8-bit Doe Ultimate Bluetooth over 2.4 GHz is offering me a lot better input latency compared to what this device was at stock. However, now that we've overclocked it, it does feel a lot better overall. I do think this is worth trying out, especially if you have a lot of these fast paced games that you want to play on a handheld. If you're curious though, check it out. I think you'll really like it. It definitely makes the controller and the device a lot more usable. I kind of find a controller like a screen. You don't really notice it until you've actually switched, then you're wondering how the heck you put up with it for so long. I used to have a 1080p screen and once I upgraded to a 1440p, 144Hz, I really can't go back. Once you go from a good controller to an awesome controller though, it's pretty hard to look back. Let me know which device you tried this on, I'm really interested to see what kind of overclocking results you can get. Just remember you can do this on any Windows handheld, so you're looking at doing this on the ROG Ally, that's definitely possible, or you can do this on the iNeo units. You can also do this on the Steam Deck if you're running Windows, but if there's an option to do this in SteamOS, please let me know. I think that'd be really cool to check out. 
I also really wish that you could do this in Android because Android controllers would be a lot better if you could overclock the input latency. I'm going to go back to playing Hades, but hopefully this tutorial helped you. I've been having a lot of fun with this and I definitely think it improves my devices overall. Make sure to let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and as always, thanks for watching.